What if I told you this and this were created by the same person? In 2009, King B-Dogs, whose real name is Brandon, stumbled across Minecraft for the first time. He was immediately impressed. In his eyes, you'd have to be a genius to code something like this. You'd have to be a genius to code something like this. Brandon promptly forgot it looked difficult and became a mod developer. For his first mod, he picked something pretty simple, and it is the most 2010 thing I've heard in my entire life. Are you ready? Chickens drop 9,000 diamonds on death and it crashes your game each time. A couple months later, Brandon begins work on the first mod he plans to actually release. It's really interesting going back and looking at this because it's such a product of its time. Instead of using Discord, he uses IRC chat rooms, and instead of using Forge or Fabric, he uses this thing called Mod Loader. Anyway, the mod added things like obsidian tools, friendly creepers, and custom swords, and it was creatively named after himself, calling it King's Mods. Overall, it had a pretty adventure feel, which we'll see expanded on in the future. This mod was actually pretty revolutionary for its time, since there were so few mods, it was one of the only ones adding anything substantial, but it was nothing compared to what comes next. Bacon blocks, adding raw and cooked blocks of- sorry, after that one. The Aether. The idea for the mod was originally inspired by a form user named Grey Acumen, who talked about wanting a dimension opposite of Minecraft's nether. Brandon liked this idea a lot, and shortly after, he announced the Aether mod. The announcement teases all of these features he's managed to code in literally under a week. By this point, it was clear to everyone that Brandon had a natural talent for code. Over time, he hired a few of his modder friends to help him with the project, and just 138 days after the original announcement, which is like one and a half hundred days videos, the team released the first ever version of the Aether. The mod added a new dimension, also called the Aether, inspired by Brandon's perception of what heaven would look like in Minecraft. Hmm, floating islands? Okay. Giant flying attack clouds. Um. Unique and deadly weapons. Okay, what is this? Because it's not heaven, that's for sure. Despite, you know, the discrepancies, for its time, it was pretty insane. I mean, it still even holds up today, if I'm being honest. There's these dungeons that spawn across the world, and each of them has super creative bosses that drop these exciting weapons when you kill them. The mod revolutionized what was considered possible in Minecraft. Brandon also knew what people wanted. The end dimension didn't exist yet, so the demand for something like the Aether was incredibly high. With all of that considered, it was just like, the best mod, and that's reflected in the download count. 5 million. Except I actually lied! What?! Because it's 15 million! Modern mods obviously have way more, so let me put that number in perspective. By the end of the mod's peak in 2012, Minecraft had only sold 15 million copies. And on top of that, the Curse Forge page was created much more recently. I honestly think 15 million does not do this mod justice. A similar Minecraft thing from that time was Skyblock, which still has 4 million less than the Aether. The impact of the mod on the Minecraft community was wild. There were so many YouTubers hyping it up that this tutorial on how to build an Aether portal got 30 million views. This video is so silly, look at all the comments saying that when they were little, they thought they could do it in vanilla. It's so cute. With the Aether mod being so popular. Hey, so me and my girls heard you made the Aether mod. Sorry, as I was saying, with the Aether mod being so popular, Brandon created his own YouTube channel to document his other projects. And one of these projects was a mod called the Aether. Two. The new version had more biomes, a stat system, and multiplayer compatibility, which is something players had been wanting for a while. The new mod was released only two years after the first one, but it didn't do nearly as well. In my personal experience with it, it was a bit confusing, and it feels too different from the first one. This is not an Aether portal. Who are you? So I just found myself going back to the original when I wanted to replay it a few years ago. Despite the sequel doing a little bit worse than the original, the Aether is still one of the most recognizable mods of all time. But Brandon was getting tired of just making Aethers over and over again, and he needed to think outside the box. He needed to create something new that's even more revolutionary than the Aether itself. Unless you've been on a modding team before, you've probably never heard of it, but Orbis introduced a new game mode called Designer. It's a little like World Edit, letting you make big changes to huge areas of blocks really quickly. The difference here is it also has procedural terrain generation. And I understand some people aren't as smart as me, so that's for biomes or giant structures or whatever. In the past, a programmer would have to spend a lot of time implementing a builder's vision to actually be able to use it. But with Orbis, builders could export it in a format that could be used right away. This helped to lower the barrier of entry for making massive content mods like the Aether, and it had a huge impact on the modding industry. Or that's what I would have said had it not been released in 2018. See, while the project was started in 2014, it took four years to make, and by that point there were already plenty of solutions for working with builders. It looks like they didn't bother finishing it or even maintaining it at all. It was really technically impressive, but it only has about 19,000 downloads today. By this point, Brandon had proven he was capable of making his crazy ideas actually happen, so when he applied to work at Mojang, he was obviously denied.
That's right, the first time he applied, it was for a senior position he wasn't nearly qualified for. Applied for it because that, that was the only position I saw at the time and I was kind of desperate to try and break in. Luckily, he saw a tweet about a new game developer position opening up and he leaped at the opportunity. He'd already updated his CV recently, which is a bit like a resume, but even so, he didn't think he'd be accepted. To Brandon's disbelief, however, he did hear back and got constant calls and interviews from the Mojang office. It must have been a pretty surreal experience for him since he'd loved the game for nearly a decade at this point. However, it wasn't looking super promising. No job had been offered. That wasn't until finally he received word that they were interested, but they had to meet him in person. So, in a last ditch attempt to snag the position, he flew all the way from Australia to Minecon 2019 in Nashville. His first impression would have to be perfect, but it just might work. And his prayers were answered in December of 2019 when he was finally offered a job. He moved to Sweden a month later to join the team in earnest. Since Brandon was the new guy, he was pretty eager to please. All right, who wants to code this one. Not it. Not it. I'll do it. Really? Some of the other developers even had doubts on if the Strider was a good idea. I mean, it's pretty different from other mobs, and there was a real risk the community would hate it. Brandon took it as a challenge, though, and spent hours creating what he believed to be the perfect take on it. And looking back, like, he kind of succeeded. He made the Strider cute and vanilla enough to where it was a pretty well-liked addition to the game. He also developed the Soul Speed enchantment, which was controversial at first since it reduced armor durability. Many players thought it might not even be worth using, but when the update finally released, it became an enchantment players wouldn't traverse the nether without. They're working on on these more controversial features, Brandon learned how the Minecraft community worked and what they would and wouldn't accept. Because of his ability to handle controversy, he's kind of become the face of new cutting-edge Minecraft features. His Twitter is the community's main source for teasers and leaks of new updates. Look at this leak Mojang doesn't want you to know about. Dude. Nobody believes you. This would carry over to his YouTube channel where he'd post a new video. This time, it was a teaser for a new boss he'd been working on. The Warden. That's right, Brandon created the Warden and a big chunk of the Deep Dark in general, which went on to be one of the most highly regarded updates ever. And then fast forward to now, do the upcoming features not scream Aether mod to you? Brandon's influence is obvious. Minecraft is adding a new dungeon structure with dozens of block variants, procedural generation, and a new mini boss, which just so happens to be air themed. Also included in the update is an auto crafting block, which is very clearly inspired by the modded content from Ender.io or similar mods, which Brandon was intimately aware of. I think like genuinely in the time he's worked at Mojang and like leading up to it he is the second most important person in Minecraft history coming only behind Notch himself this man created the Aether, a tool that could have revolutionized mod development, Striders, Soul Speed, and the f***ing Warden. Oh yeah, and did I mention that he's an organizer for a Minecraft event that's raised $220,000 for five different charities? This guy is insane! He also played Hermitcraft with Gryan for a day. Okay, this is the end of the video. Normally I'd ask you to subscribe, but this time I want you to join my Discord. I think it'll be a really fun place to hang out if there's more people in it. Alright, have a great rest of your day.